Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very exciting video for you. I am working with a very special guest. It's actually the founder of one of my favorite brands, as you guys know, BDK Parfums. I'm having the chance to interview the founder, David Benedek, and we're being hosted in this beautiful apartment by Gallery Maison Parisian. And I'm super excited to go through the line with David because actually he's not very um, active with all of the interviews and being in front of the camera, so I had the chance to take him out and uh, have him all to myself today. So, hi David, how are you? Hey, yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and uh, making this interview with me today. My pleasure. This is David Benedek from BDK Parfum and uh, thank you so much for coming and making a video with me today. Thank you for having me. No, of course. Yeah, it's cool. So it's, uh, it's very nice because I've actually never done a interview with like a brand owner etc on my channel so this is the first one and I thought it was fitting because uh, as you guys know from like my videos I'm really a massive fan of uh, your brand thank you. and I think people <laughs> can tell especially uh, Gris Chanel <laughs> and uh, yeah so it's a brand that I really think uh, and I think it's very obvious that it's growing so much and it's becoming such a, you know, um, a hyped brand at the <laughs> moment. So I'm so happy to see this. Yeah, yeah. of course. And it was super nice to meet you in Paris. We actually met in Paris like a week ago and it was really nice to finally meet uh, the person behind this amazing brand. So I'm very excited for today's video. And uh, if you want to say anything, uh, you're welcome to. Thank you. Yeah. Hi guys. So I'm David Benedek from BDK and I'm super happy to be here with Demi today. We were in Paris and uh, like we we just met like a few weeks ago and yeah. we decided to record this short video. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, exactly. So very happy and uh, excited to be doing this for the first time on my channel. And uh, yeah, so basically today I wanted to make uh, David's job a little hard and uh, get him to share his like favorites from the brand. If you have one or two or five or the whole line, it's up to you what you okay. want to talk about. <laughs> But I wanted to hear David's personal favorites because I don't know which ones are his favorites and I'm also going to share a few of mine. So if you want to go ahead and uh, talk about yeah. each uh, Is that an easy question? David? I know. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, made, I made them all and I, I created them with uh, all the very talented performers that uh, work with me and they're all like my babies, right? Yes, so but uh, they, I, I like them for different kind of reasons and uh, I, I should speak first about which one I love to wear okay. and why maybe yeah. that would be that would be nice. So one one of the first that I would choose would be maybe creme de cuir. Mm -hmm. Creme de cuir is it's a perfume that I really like yeah. uh, because I think as a leather perfume, it's something different. Uh, I think you smell it already, right? I have. And let's smell it together. Yes. But creme de cuir, it's it, it's an interesting fragrance because it's a soft leather. Yeah. It's a white leather. Without any animalistic notes. Yes, thank you. That's it. Mm. Can I say a few things? Yeah, of course. Okay, as um, on my channel, I've mentioned so many times that I'm really not a fan of like leather because I find it super polarizing. Uh, um, like you said, animalistic. It's too much. It's too disturbing for me personally. I mean, the some notes in perfume, mm -hmm. you just you have something about it, and you find it a little um, disturbing. Leather is that for me, and when I smell creme de cuir, I, I've never ever smelled like leather in this way. And to me, it's much more suede. Like it has more of that creamy, like a little um, almost like a sweetness, um, a luxuriousness to it, which I just adore. Thank you, but you know what is interesting here is that you, at the top notes you have some like uh, fruit leaves, okay. like pineapple leaves, yeah. mandarin leaves, bergamot leaves, and you are not inside the fruits, mm -hmm. but more it's more about the leaves and the green side of the fruits. Yeah. And this is what I really like because I think it's a very nice mix with, with this soft leather coming yeah. on the skin, and it's creamy, it's soft, and at the same time it's intense because I, I think the it stays well on the skin, right? Yeah, for sure. And I've I've worn this one a lot actually. This is a fragrance that I like to wear like. A bit like every day, every season. I think you can wear it, you can wear it during the winter, during the summer. Yeah. It's a. It, I think it's a kind of a, an easy fragrance to wear. Yeah, for sure. Me too. And uh, is this one that you personally like to wear, or you? This is one, one, one amongst them all. Yeah. But uh, I will. Uh, yeah. My latest creation that I really like is. I think you like it too. Is Gris Chanel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, uh, I adore it. And uh, for me, Gris Chanel is really 
Uh, I'm really proud actually to have launched Richarlet yeah. because I think BDK succeeded to do like a very sensual perfume but in a very uh, refined way. I Absolutely. Say. I couldn't describe it better if uh, I tried it. Yeah, so let's make it together. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually wearing it today, so uh, <laughs> can smell it on me. Yeah. Actually, Richardet is the story between Sandalwood from India and Vetiver from Madagascar. And I think you can really feel the quality of the Sandalwood yeah. and the Vetiver that we use. And the duality, the duality sorry, between the sandalwood and the vetiver bring something addictive and sensual given by the woods yeah. but at the top note you have some fig and black tea yeah. and the addiction is also given on the top notes with the fig yeah this, okay. is, this is what i like yeah it's for me almost like it's a milky fig like it has this um creaminess because again fig is a note that i'm not a big fan of it by itself and in a lot of fragrances that have fig is like the most dominant note yeah. i'm usually not a fan but I think it's something with um, how a lot of your fragrances are composed. They're so well blended that you don't um, you don't necessarily smell like one thing more than the other. They're just blended so well. And as you guys know, I always say, uh, Gris Chanel, it's like, it's super sensual. Like, that's what I would say. Like, it feels like luxury on your skin. It's super creamy, smooth, a little powdery. Um, well, it's woody, but it's soft. Um, wow. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, but actually, you know, when when we when I launched Cri Charnel, the idea about this perfume was to make like an elixir of sensuality. Okay. In a very French Parisian way. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was inspired by the grey by the grey sky of the city. Okay. Because in Paris the weather is not yes. so, so nice every time. Yeah. And I wanted to to recreate like the, 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 the feeling that you can have when you are in, the, in your in your bed yeah. with the sheets around you. Oh nice you know? with like the grey sky. Yeah, you uh -huh. see and you yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. in a cocoon. I don't know the word. Maybe. Yeah, cocoon. Yeah, in a cocoon at, at, at your at home actually, yeah. and uh, it's also a skin perfume. Yeah. Actually, even if it projects well. Yeah. And it's definitely a skin perfume. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a really complete perfume. It's uh, yeah. yeah. For me, it's absolutely incredible. I think it's very unisex, but personally, I think for me, it's uh, something I like to wear. I haven't actually smelled this on anyone else before, but mm -hmm. on me personally, I love to wear it. But I could see it being uh, very unisex, is that right? Uh, it's completely right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I love it even more listening to the story of being yeah. in bed, yeah. looking at the gray sky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, nice. yeah you know, at BDK, we try to test stories, yeah. you know, uh, through our perfume. Yeah. And uh, we try to be very authentic in the inspiration that we had from the start. Yeah. And. Uh, I try to, to, to t tell the people the, these stories in a very simple way. Yeah. But uh, this is how I see the brand actually. Yeah. Telling real stories with nice perfume. Yeah. And uh, talking about life actually, you know. Yeah. And this, all these kind of different Experience. moments that yeah, you experience yeah, in life. And so, yeah. Yeah. Which no, is one of, the, of these stories. Yeah. yeah. I adore it. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely one of my favorites as everyone already knows. <laughs> Uh, what else? What, okay, so I would I would speak then maybe about uh, bouquet de Hongrie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why? Because you know I, I I told you a bit about my family story, you know. Yeah. And uh, actually, bouquet de Hongrie is the perfume I created to pay tribute to my grandmother. Okay. Uh, she was from uh, uh, Eastern Europe, from Romania, and uh, she was passionate about perfume, and she was the one who gave me the passion for perfume. When she arrived in Paris in the late fifties. She opened her perfumery shop, and uh, then my parents uh, uh, continued the story with the shop, and I, I really grew up surrounded by perfume. Yeah. So thanks to her, I, I, I was allowed to know more about perfume, about the history of perfume. And actually, Bouquet de Hongrie is, a, is the story of a floral bouquet, but I was inspired by the green side of the flower in the water. Okay. Not so much about the flower themselves, yeah. but more about uh, the, the green, the green uh, leaf of the, of the rose, of the jasmine, surrounded by the water. Like the elements that surround the uh, flower. Exactly. More than like, the flower itself. Yeah, totally. And like, uh, uh, for me, Bouquet de Hongrie is a transparent floral bouquet. Absolutely. You can, really feel, you can really feel the water. It's very like ethereal. It has this like, um, like when you wear it, you're right. Like it doesn't feel like you're wearing a rose perfume or a peony perfume. No. It's uh, it has that very transparent, uh, watery. Clean. Yeah, a bit clean. clean. Yes, yeah. clean for sure. And it's fresh. It's clean. At the same time, it's 
a little bit sensual too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I feel like as a as a woman, a lot of men tend to love these sort of perfumes on women, which obviously wear what you want to wear. If you want to wear, uh, I don't know, the craziest perfume, leather, animalia, go for it. But I really feel like when it comes to like men, at least uh, my experience, they really like um, these sort of fresh, floral, clean, um, mm. beautiful smelling fragrances. According to me, I think it's a well balanced uh, perfume. Because you see the floral part is not too much, yeah. then the clean part is not too much too. Yeah. And I think it's a well-balanced perfume between this floral side, but more the green side of the flower, yeah. and all these uh, uh, ambroxan, yeah. musk notes yeah, that you have musky. in this perfume. Yeah. You know, I, in my review I said it. I actually really appreciate fragrances like this because for me, I use these fragrances as like an easy wear fragrance. Like you're going for lunch, you're looking at your perfumes, you don't really know what to wear. You grab something that smells clean and fresh and very easy. And this is something like uh, Bouquet de Like it's very uh, likable. And um, it's not the craziest perfume or the most unique fragrance ever. But for me, the way that it's been made is really beautiful. And um, honestly, I think it's like an incredible perfume for how it's been made. For yeah, I, actually, I, I really see what you mean, saying that it's not the craziest perfume, yes. but this is exactly what I wanted to do. Of course. Because I, 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 at the beginning, when I launched Big Decay, which is a niche perfume brand, like a confidential brand, yeah. I was telling myself, okay, David, it's not because you're going to do something uh, confidential that you cannot try to build your own classic floral exactly. bouquet in your vision. Yeah. And this is what I did with uh, Bouquet de Yeah. So, no, absolutely. And the only reason I said that is because I don't want people to think just because I'm sitting with you, I'm just going to be like, oh, this one is the best perfume ever, this one is the best, this one is yeah. I'm going to be honest, and for me, this fragrance is beautiful. I actually have it uh, in our Airbnb right now, and yeah. I wear it all the time, like all the time, especially to go run errands, go to lunch. I love wearing it, but I was just saying that, uh, you know, it's not a crazy perfume, so... No. That's but sometimes, um, sometimes, you know, yeah, and of this, this is also the, the vision I have for the, for the perfumery, is not... You don't have to always to wear something that will bloom away, that will be very strong and yeah. that will come over you. I think sometimes it's super nice to wear this kind of perfume, Absolutely. but also it's super nice to have a, a smell that is around you, but behind you. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, exactly. I think you know me is the typical exam good example for this kind of perfume. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I personally am such a fan of it. I just mentioned it in like two of my videos yeah. actually. Okay, so do you have any others or uh, that you want to spotlight? Uh, no, I, I think I, I'm curious to hear about what you think. Okay, <laughs> okay so to, actually all three of the fragrances you spoke about, they were also going to be in mine. So yeah. Gris Chanel, obviously, Creme de Cuir, I feel like this fragrance for, on a man would be absolutely amazing, which mm -hmm. I haven't had the chance to smell it on a guy, but I really think that this fragrance would be just incredible. Obviously, as you know, bouquet. Now, one that I didn't think I would love as much, but I think it's probably one of my favorites, is Passessoir. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you could spare it for me, I think this fragrance is just really wow. Like, it was something that I didn't expect to be um, the way that it was, but it really hit me from like. Um, let me smell it actually so I can remember. Thank you. Let's see. Yeah. This fragrance, it's super like addictive, um, sweet, but not too much. It has a freshness, a punchiness, like a little bit of a floral aspect. It has this kind of gourmand, caramel mm. sweetness, but it, like I said, it's not too much. And um, it's well, wow. for me, this one is really well, wow. and uh, definitely one of my favorites. I didn't really look at before, so. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really like uh, pay much attention to it, I think because I was busy spraying Bruch on it all day. But uh, this one, it's a uh, pass as well. It's Do you know the story behind I actually got told it, but I would like to, uh, would like to hear it. It's a bit funny, you know? So, pass as well is French, and in, in English it means not tonight. Not tonight. Because actually, I wanted to represent like the, the very, you know, all the Parisian women yeah. in, Par in Paris, they are very independent and they are yeah. very confident. And I like the way they walk in the streets. The way they dress, they we feel like they are like uh, superhuman and at the same time very romantic. Yeah. And this is what I like in the Parisian girls. Yeah. And I wanted to recreate this feeling in Passe Soir, but because Passe Soir for me is the story of a, 
uh, other woman, but I think it's definitely mixed. It's unisex, but the inspiration was a was a woman. Yeah. And I, I thought it was a woman that would not go back to her place at night to change her clothes and go out with her friends. She directly get out of the office, meet her friends. She just highlight her lips from a red uh, lipstick. Yeah. And she likes to dance. She likes to party. Yeah. She's very successful. But she, we never know with who she's going back home, you know? Yeah. She's a bit mysterious. Okay. And this, this thing I wanted to express with, uh, with the queens, the orange flower, and the, and the peer. Okay. So actually it's really a trilogy between these three raw materials. Yeah. On the top note you have some black pepper, okay. which gives the freshness. Yeah. And it's really nice to mix the freshness with the sweetness of the queens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel like uh, queens, <clears throat> I've only really smelled it in like maybe three perfumes. I think uh, it's really what makes this fragrance like something uh, different, you yeah. know? It's not a fruity floral like you would expect, it has something really unique about it. And really something that hits you that you're like, whoa, what is that? And I just think it's super intoxicating actually, this fragrance. Okay, do you want to grab one for me? It is yeah. Rue Smoking, uh. but I feel like a lot of people already know this one and uh, are massive fans of this fragrance because... I, I love it too. Huh? Uh, me too. I, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to speak about it before, yeah. but uh, then I, I maybe uh, think that we will speak about yeah, it. Yeah, of yeah, of course, of course. Obviously this one is, um, I really feel like, well loved from the brand and for a good reason. It is truly like an incredible gourmand fragrance, but not in a way that you would... Um, thank you. Yeah, I really I love it so much. You know the thing is that um, I'm not sure how hard it is. Actually, well, right now I'm creating like a slightly gourmand, so I know. But it, I'm assuming that it's very hard to make a gourmand that isn't sickly. You know, like that isn't too sweet or suffocating or really? heavy. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not easy. And uh, that's what I love so much about rouge smoking is that it has like a subtle gourmand feeling but being a true gourmand at the same time if that makes any sense like it has like a creaminess a sweetness a powderiness you have the cherry the almond the heliotrope that really warm um cozy feeling to it which i just adore what i like in this fragrance is that it's a it's a cherry it's a cherry perfume yeah it's a cherry nose but we work around the seed of the cherry Okay. Not the juice of the cherry, so it's not very juicy, yeah. it's about the texture of the seed of the cherry. Yeah. And I think you can really feel it. Yeah. It's like a bit like velvet. Yes, absolutely. You see? Yes, and with, with the black vanilla from Madagascar, yeah. that you can really feel the absolute of vanilla. And at the same time, it's super musky. Yeah. That it, so that means that this perfume is not like, uh, is not very, is not too sweet. Yeah. And the musk allows it to be more fresh and, and lighter that it could that we could imagine yeah you know lighter doesn't mean uh not strong yeah it just means that it's very fresh and it has know. an airiness to it yeah like it has exactly. an airiness yes yeah, i was i was yeah. looking for the word yeah. yeah and something i love as well i it has like a little bit of a nutty facet to it mm. the almonds or the heliotrope i love when gourmand fragrances have like a nutty aspect and uh, it does for sure. I think the nutty aspects comes from the black vanilla. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, okay, because sometimes the, the black vanilla when it's extract is so wide okay. that it can bring this nutty side okay. to the fragrance. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's incredible. And as we were just spoke, uh, speaking before we filmed, that a lot of men, this is their favorite from really? the UK, right? Is that what you were saying? Like, uh, I, I, was, yeah, I was telling you that, yeah, at the basic, people could think that with the color and yes. everything, yeah. it could be uh, it could be more like a feminine fragrance. Yeah. But actually, it's, it's amazing because many men like it and buy it actually. Yeah. And I think it works very well on the man and at the same time on the woman. Yeah. It's definitely a unisex fragrance. Yeah, I I agree one hundred percent. So yeah, for me, I'm uh, smoking. I adore it as a gourmand. It's uh, it's really good. So another one actually that I recently smelled. I smelled it in Dubai. Like, few weeks ago was the one from your new collection. Yeah. I smelled both of them yeah. and there was one that I, I really preferred over the other and it was Citrus Riviera. Uh, if you want to smell it. Yeah of course I, I love it too actually and I'm yeah. really I'm really proud about it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, so as you said it's the latest one that we just launched this summer okay. in the new collection with a citrus it's, so it's citrus Riviera and Saint Dargent. Yeah. But uh, I, I really like Citrus Riviera too. So yeah. Yeah. let's smell it. 
and I'm sure as well, like coming up and creating uh, citruses, I know it's something that's uh, that it, I that heard it's very hard. <laughs> super hard. Yeah, yeah, that's what because I heard. There are so many citrus already on the market. Exactly. But so how can you do something different, different. in a citrus way? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for me, this is the sort of citrus that I really like, especially um, especially to wear myself, because it has like something that's bitter. Like it has this bitter um, feeling to it. I'm not sure if it's neroli or something but it has this very juicy but bitter but fresh a little aromatic and I just really like it as a citrus and I did prefer it a lot more over the Cell d'Argent but this one for me like Citrus Riviera it's a um, really well done citrus fragrance thank you actually for Citrus Riviera and this collection I was inspired by the South of France oh, nice. because I'm going there since I'm a, since I'm a, shy, I'm yeah. a child and I was inspired by the Cap d'Antibes okay. which is a very nice uh, location uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, yeah. and I was inspired by the, by a white house in the gardens with the citrus, with the with the lemon trees. Okay. Uh, you you know you're laying down on the on the grass and you can see the lemon trees. Yeah. It's hot and at the same time it's cold because the the night is coming. Yeah. And I wanted to just express the joy of the summer yeah. in this in this bottle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can really, I mean. Uh, it's for me, yeah, yeah it's sparkling. It's juicy I didn't want to say sparkling. I smell joy, but yeah. <laughs> it yeah. smells. Uh, yeah, yeah, it has this very bright and uh, sparkling, yeah. like you're right, yeah. sparkling yeah. feeling to it, which I really, I really love. Because for me, when it comes to citrus, I prefer citrus like this than something that's very marine, aquatic, salty. Whereas uh, this is exactly what I love. And you have uh, the, the back. The, actually, in this perfume, the back notes are interesting because you can feel the tonka beans yeah. and you have a little touch of eucalyptus okay yeah yeah, so, yeah for sure so this is really this, this is really uh, different I think. yeah and uh, this is what makes the originality of citrus yeah. Video. yeah for me i love it and if you're looking for a citrus that's a little more unique and uh, something very high quality for me, Citrus Riviera is fantastic because most of the fragrances I feel from your line so far, they're very, um, not oriental, but they're a little more unique, uh, strong sort of scents, whereas the Citrus line is um, something different. Actually, you're, you're totally right, and this is exactly why I created a new collection, okay. because for me, it didn't have sense to make fresher scent yeah. in the existing collection, yeah. as the Parisian collection is like super sensual with a yeah. lot of nuances and a lot yeah. of textures. And the la collection matière is always around run raw material. Yeah. La collection azure allow me to to explore the fresh scents yeah. in the perfume. Yeah. So that's why I created it. Yeah. yeah. So it feels like a full collection. Yeah. I, 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 for me it was important to have yeah. a clear message. Yeah. For with these three collections. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so I think that we will wrap up the video here. And uh, thank you so much for filming with me and, uh, you, and choosing between your babies. <laughs> so yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video with David. I feel really honored that uh, David sat down with me today and uh, filmed this. And it was a really nice experience for, uh, I hope, both of us. Yeah, for both of us. And uh, yeah, so thank you again for watching, guys. And um, don't forget to see uh, and check out BBK. I'm sure you can find them pretty much everywhere now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. And uh, actually, quickly, I wanted to mention something really exciting is that next week, I'm not sure by the time that this video comes out, but I'm going to have some information down below. So I'm actually going to be collaborating with Lucky Scent on a BDK, a, BDK, a, BDK, a BDK exclusive discount code on Lucky Scent. So I'll leave all like more information, etc. down below, but that's something to stay tuned and uh, keep an eye out for. So thank you for, uh, thank you for coming on again. Thank you, Danny. And uh, so we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.